In this video, we're gonna continue our development of paging in order to get something that's really generally good enough to use for things like multiprocessing and memory allocation. And we'll continue to build on this approach as we move on. So this isn't gonna be like a perfect iteration or anything like that. It's mostly just going to be good enough for us to build on top of. And I wanna give you a bit of visualization as we go through building this idea of paging. So we're gonna use an emulator known as Box or B-O-C-H-S which is going to allow us to actually see the paging table as we're debugging through our operating system. So we'll talk a bit about box, we'll talk a bit about paging, we'll put those things together and just get a bit of good memory management set up here in the operating system. Before I dive too much into that, there were a few mistakes that I had made here that some people have helpfully pointed out. Uh, thanks so much for pointing out these different issues. I always appreciate that and we can get those all fixed up here. The first thing that we found was that we actually weren't passing this magic value into the k-main anymore. And there's a few things that we'll need to change to do that. We need to make sure that we don't overwrite EAX since that's where that value is going to be stored. And then we also need to push EAX here. And that should fix up our problems. So we'll get that all sorted here. Another question that I had that someone was asking was about this graphics mode. It was mainly about the difference between this and the VGA mode. And the main idea here is with VGA mode, you'll notice that when we actually write something to the screen, what we're writing is characters, right? So you see here when we're working with this VGA driver, we write characters into this array that we have available. Now with graphics mode, we can actually extend it further. Rather than writing actual letters or characters, we can write pixels instead. This allows us to build out graphic user interfaces like the one that you currently are seeing, right? So that's gonna allow us to actually build like a graphic operating system. So we'll turn this switch on once we're ready to start building out graphics. We can start to actually build a graphics interface for our operating system, which will be a lot of fun to do and build. So that's generally what that switch is going to be. So hopefully that helps to answer any questions and fix any sort of problems that we currently have. Um, as usual, if you do notice any sort of mistakes, please feel free to point them out. I'm happy to correct everything. I wanna make sure that we get the, the best code possible. So I always like the insight from the community. So with that being said, let's jump right into our paging. So in the last video, we set up some very basic paging, which was going to get us booted into our operating system and getting the kernel into the higher half of memory. So we dealt with those two aspects. And what we were left with is a paging table that we have currently set up that's like a really basic, simple one for us to be able to work with. Now what's helpful here is to get a bit of a visualization of what that looks like. And we're gonna do that using box. So what we do to set this up is we are going to create a file named uh, box like this. Now you can name the file really whatever you like. I'm just gonna name it this since it's easiest. I'm gonna set up a general configuration. Now this configuration I'll put inside of the repository and I'll put that into the description and you'll be able to just copy and paste this over. Now box is a little tricky to set up initially or at least I found it was on my computer. There's a few different things that you're going to need to do. You're going to need to get these two different BIOS images and you're gonna to have to place them somewhere on your computer. If you install Box through sudo apt-get, these actually, I believe, will be available at user share Box. Uh, otherwise, I've downloaded mine just out of the latest release of Box and placed it in my downloads. So wherever you end up downloading it to, you're just going to place that path inside of the configuration file. You'll be good to go. Now, another note here is the CD-ROM. You just want to make sure that you point this to your ISO. Mine's kernel.iso in the same directory. So just make sure that this points to the right location of that actual kernel file. And that's really all we need to do to get Box initially set up. Now, you're also going to have to install it. And the way that you would do that is you would just do like a sudo apt-get if you're on something like uh, Debian or Ubuntu. If you're not, you can download the binary and you can compile the code yourself as well. So you would do sudo app that get box, and then you wanna also do it for box X. So these two you want to run and install. And then what you're going to do is you're just gonna run the box command pointing to the box file that we created. And that's going to launch the box emulator. You see that the emulator has this really nice uh, graphic interface. And it automatically breaks our emulator right at the beginning, uh, much like QEMU will do with the hyphen S uh, flag set on it. Now, when we're set like this, what we do is we press continue. You'll see that it continues to boot into our operating system. 
it gets us up to the grub interface. I press enter and then it does, you know, all the different stuff that we have it printing. You could ignore this output. This output is going to be a little bit messy just because we haven't set anything up properly for the paging yet. So uh, just ignore this, no need to worry. But the main thing that I want to talk about here is if I break, we can actually view the page table. This is the page table that we currently have set up. You can see that there's two different uh, addresses that are, you see that the L address is going to be the logical address, which is just another name for the virtual address usually. And it's mapped to some different physical addresses. So it actually has the mapping between logical address to physical address. This is really helpful for our understanding of paging because it helps us visualize the way that the paging is actually set up. When people talk about paging, there's all these different layers and different ideas associated with it. It gets really complicated really fast. So being able to visualize this idea is very helpful. So you see here, this is like our upper half kernel that we've set up, right? So we have this C value at the front here. So I could tell that this one is the one that we've set up for that portion of the kernel. Now you'll see as we're continuing on through here that we'll do a little bit of modification with these values as we're continuing to build the memory management once we get into our kernel.c. So let's go ahead and do that. Inside of the kernel.c file, I'm going to basically do a few different things just to get everything set up and running for us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into init memory and we're going to use init memory to be able to actually build out the different memory structures that we have. And then we'll have a few other helpers along the way later on that are going to help us with actually building out the actual memory itself and doing all of our different allocations. So the very first thing that I want to do here before I get into init memory is I just want to get an idea of where things are in memory. So I'm going to take a look at a few different things. The first thing is going to be out of that boot info that we have. So I'm going to take a uint32 pointer to this boot info mods address plus four. So generally what we're doing is we want to determine where our physical memory is going to start. And there's a lot of different ways that we can really do this. But one trick that we can use is we can actually take a look at this module address. And if we take that value and we add 0xFFF to it, and then we end it with the negation of 0xFFF, we'll actually get to the physical allocation starting point. So that's one way that we can generally find that. And then when we initialize memory, what we can do is we can generally take a look at uh, the upper value. So the mem upper that comes out of that struct times 1024 and the physical allocation start. And basically what these two values are going to represent for us, if we take a look at our memory here, so if I come over to memory.c, these two values are just going to represent the high point in memory. So when I'm taking a look at my arguments here, we have the high point in memory, and then we have essentially the starting point of our allocation. So it allows us to be able to map between the starting point and the ending point, essentially, is what we've mapped inside of here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change the signature inside of the header as well, just because it's now different between the two of them. So just make sure that we have that synced up. And now inside of initialized memory, what we're going to do is we're going to do a variety of different things. So first thing is that we actually want to get access to the page tables that we set up inside of our assembly code. And the way that we're generally going to do that is using this initial page dirt that we had. So we have this variable initial page dir, which was the thing that we declared over here in boot.s as a global. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so we need to be able to get this variable to start off with. And since it's a global variable, we can access it. And the way that we access it is just instead of a memory.h, we can say, uh, make an extern reference to it. So we could say extern uint 32 t uh, initial page dirt and it was an array of 1024 entries so remember that's generally what we were setting up here which is the array of 1024 entries and this is going to represent as noted in the name the page directory right so it's going to have 1024 entries inside of it 
And what we're going to try to do is we're just going to try to map this in a successive way. So we set up a few temporary things that we don't necessarily need once we get into the actual kernel itself. That being this first page table and then the last one that exists inside of here as well. So we're going to actually go through the process of invalidating those different values since we don't need them anymore. So what we do is we say we're going to set the value at 0 equal to 0. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invalidate 0. Now invalidate is going to be another function. And the invalidate is going to take in some virtual address. And it's going to run a volatile that is in VLPG percent zero, where percent zero is going to be the address that we're trying to invalidate. So this is a command that exists inside of x86. It's in the invalid page command. So it invalidates the page for us since it's no longer needed. So that's just our way of being able to remove that page since we don't currently need it. And then we're going to do something known as a recursive mapping. So what a recursive mapping does is basically, when we take a look at the structure of our page directory, it goes from zero to 1,023, right? As a size of 1024 as its size. What we do is we start mapping from the end of it rather than from the beginning of it. It makes it a bit easier for us to structure and build out our paging tables this way. So this is a common approach that we'll often see. So that's why we're starting at the end of this because we're actually gonna map from the end. And what we're doing inside of here is we're setting up our initial setup here. So we are going to take the initial page there minus the kernel start. Kernel start is another value that we did have defined, right? So the kernel start is generally going to be inside of memory.h, we'll place it. And what I'm referencing with kernel start is I'm really referencing that location that we've placed the kernel. So the 0xc value here. So that's what we mean by kernel start. OK, so we're taking this initial page term. We're subtracting it from the kernel start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to OR this with a few different values. These are going to be flags to describe the actual piece of memory. So I'm going to create a page flag present to say that the entry is present and a page flag write to say that it's possible to write to this segment. This is very similar to the setup of our, I think GDT used a very similar type of flags, right? We had a present flag to say if something was actually there. We had like the ability to set reads and writes on that as well. That was something that we saw in GDT and this follows a very similar structure in its entries. So I'm going to define these different setups here. So we're going to define the uh, page flag present. It's going to be one shifted zero. And then we're going to define the page flag right in a similar fashion, just like that. I don't realize I don't actually need the, uh, so I don't need the semicolons at the end here since these are defined. So there we go, we've got these defines here. And what I'll do is I'll just like move these to the bottom just to make this a little bit more clear and easy to read. There we go. So that gives us our initial page directory setup. Now there's one other thing that we're going to do here. Well, there's a few other things, but one other thing that we should immediately do here, and that is to invalidate another page. The other page that we're going to invalidate is one that is sitting close to the end here of our virtual memory is this particular address here. So generally, these were two pages that we had originally set up that we no longer need. And we've replaced these pages essentially with this initial page directory set up here. That's generally what we've done in this process. And then what we're going to do as our final pieces is we're going to set up our physical memory so that it's available and ready to go for our allocations. And then we're just going to set up some arrays to help us keep track of how memory has been allocated and what sort of things we've currently done. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to create a function named PMM in it. It's going to take in that physical alloc start and it's going to take in the memory high and it's going to allocate the memory starting at this alloc start up to the high point in memory. 
So we're going to have a void and it's going to be called PMM init. Like I said, we give it the starting point, which we'll just call, we'll call that mem low and we'll call the other variable mem high, okay? And what we do is we define a few different variables here. So we want to define where the minimum and maximum page frame is currently located. Remember that a frame is basically the physical representation of a page. It's like the physical partitions of memory. And generally I like to store these as global variables since we're likely going to need them inside of different locations of our program. So we'll have a page frame min and we'll have another static uh, page frame max. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, so the page frame min would generally be equal to the division of memory low by 4096. And the reason for this is because 4096 is the size of our page, right? So we want to divide it out based on the size of the page itself. But generally, when we're taking a look at this low, we actually want to make sure that we're rounding this value off in a particular way. We actually want to make sure that we're rounding this value up. So we want to do a ceiling division. And one question may be, well, how could we do a ceiling division? And the answer is that we, of course, have to implement it ourselves because we don't have any sort of way of being able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small little macro inside of my util.h. That macro is just going to be a define, which we'll call ceiling division. It takes in two arguments, a and b. And then what it does is it takes the value of a, it adds it to b, and then it's going to take that and it's going to subtract one from it. So maybe we'll just put this whole A plus B in brackets here. We'll subtract one from it. And then we're going to take that whole result and we're going to divide that by B. Okay. That's the way that we can define ceiling division. So we take A plus B minus one and we divide it by B. So that's a really simple way of setting up ceiling division inside of our code. Okay, so that's how we'll have that defined. I just wanna make sure, do I have all my brackets matching? Yeah, it looks like we're all good to go there. Okay, so that's the way that we can define ceiling division. So now back over here, what we can do is we can use that ceiling division to be able to do our division with rounding up here. So I'll just say seal div, uh, we'll do mem low and we'll do it by 1000. This is the representation of 4096 in hexadecimal. Now I'm also of course going to include uh, my util.h so that I have access to that ceiling division. Now for the maximum value, we don't care as much about rounding this one in a particular way, but we do a similar type of calculation. So we take that high, we divide it by 4096, and we're good to go. Now the other thing that we're going to keep track of is the total allocated, which is going to start at zero. We'll again define that as a global. And we'll just use this to keep track of how many pages have been allocated and what the current status of memory is going to be. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mem set of a particular array. Not array, I'm just going to define right in here. It's going to be an array that's a uint8 and I'm gonna call it the physical memory bitmap. So it's a map of physical memory. Now we have to give this a particular size. Now this is something that we really should do in a dynamic way, but just to keep things as simple as possible, I'm just gonna hard code in some values for now. I know that this isn't necessarily an ideal approach for this. However, later on we can come back and fix it to make it more dynamic, but I'm just gonna define a set number of page is as 256. And I'm also going to define a set number of page frames, which would be, we'll take a, a few values here that I'll just go ahead and set. So we're going to take this, we're going to divide it by the size of our page, which would be 4096, and then divide it up by eight. So get it into, you know, individual bits essentially. Now this actual setup here, we should be doing based on the actual allocation of available RAM. That would be the best way for us to do it. 
However, for now, this is the way that I'm going to set this up. And generally, it would have been better to set this up as a bit array as well. These are some notes that we're going to make, and we're going to you know, set this up in a better way as we continue to build and refactor this code. So I'll just leave a note here that we might want to do this dynamically, and we might want to use a bit array for this. And we'll, we'll take a look at those types of concepts as we continue to build on here. But for now, this will serve us fine to be able to work with. So I'm going to mem set that physical memory bitmap to the value of zero with the size of the physical memory bitmap, just like this, okay? So that's the way that we're generally going to set this up that will initialize our physical memory for us. Now there's two other things that we're going to want to mem set. We're gonna to wanna to keep track of the page directories and the page directories that have been used. So these are two other pieces that we may want to have available to us. So generally I would set these up as, again, static values. So we're gonna have one called uh, page dirds, which is gonna take a look at the number of page directories and it'll be 1,024. So remember the size of each of these page directories is 1,024. So basically what we're doing here is we're allocating this number of page directories and inside of those page directory, this is 1,024 entries, right? That's the way that that's generally built out. And just to make sure that everything stays in a good consistent format, we're actually gonna go ahead and align this uh, 4096 like this. That way it's actually aligned on the page for us. And then the other thing that we're going to have is a uint8, which is going to keep track of the page directories used. And this one is just going to use the num page directories. So basically this is actually the page directories with all of their entries. These are the page directories that have been used so far. So just keeping track of that idea. Okay, so we're just gonna set these up initially we're going to do a mem set on these. So I'm going to mem set page dirs to zero. And the number of allocations that we want to do here is actually going to be that 4096 value, so the size of the page, times the number of page directories. So that's the way that we would generally initialize this. And then our other mem set is going to be uh, page dirs used. We're gonna set these to zero based on the number of page directories, just like this. And that gives us our very basic memory allocation. Now we can test this out and give this a try and see what happens. The very first thing to do here is really just to try booting this and just see if the whole thing crashes, right? So first off, we'll just see if this actually goes through and makes. It is probably the case that I need to declare each of these in the header. That was probably something that I've forgotten to do as we're going through here. So let's just go ahead and put these function stubs inside of the header file. Just, you know, that way we have these declared properly. So it was this one and it was this invalidates that I don't have declared. So I want that in memory.h. Okay. Now we want to take a look here and just see, it shows that these have conflicting types. Often when this kind of thing happens, it's just because of the order of my inputs, which in this case I have in the right ordering, because this is a uint32, I gave this a value of zero. So it's a little bit odd that we have this previous conflicting void uint32 underscore t. Oh, and it looks like I would need to also include the header, of course, inside of here. So I want to include memory.h inside of here. And we can make that again. And it looks like that corrected most of the errors. Uh, physical memory bitmap is not declared. It's probably just a typo on my part, right? So let's see here. This one is in pmup init. Physical memory bitmap is undeclared, but it just look like we have it right here. We have UNT32, physical memory bitmap. Both of these are, all of these are matching. 
Uh, let's just take a look at some of these other errors. They might give us a bit of a hint of what's happening. Oh yeah, it looks like uh, we have an error here. Specifically expected this brace bracket before token on this define. Ah, these define shouldn't have a semicolon here. There we go. That was the problem. So now let's just take a look and see if this thing boots, which I'll do with QMU, since that's the easiest way to do this. And we can see that nothing terrible has happened. That's a good sign. Now, one other thing that we can try here is we could try printing something out after this. It's likely to be an interesting exercise here. So we'll say memory allocation done. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at VGA.C. Now, notice the memory address here. Let's go ahead and make this. Let's try to run this. Let's see what happens. Do you see how the operating system crashed? It might be a little hard to see on my screen, unfortunately, but the operating system crashed. Why it crashed is actually because of this address. Because this address is at B8000, it's not actually a page that our operating system has access to currently. So we actually need to correct this address. This actually shows us that our memory addressing and paging is working properly because we weren't able to access this address. To fix this, we simply turn it into the proper address, which is going to have this C00 in front of it. Now, when I run my code, you'll see that this works successfully. So when I do this, now it prints out. So that's a really interesting thing, right? And I can actually show you inside of Box why that might be the case. And hopefully this will clarify for you a little bit more what's happening here. So when I go through and I continue this, when I take a look at my operating system, I boot it, it gets the memory allocation. Let's break here. Let's view the page table and let's have a look at what we have. So do you see the different segments of our page table that exist and the way that they're mapping into different areas of memory, right? You can see here pretty clearly that there is no page table that has that B8000 in it. Because of that, we weren't able to access that memory because as far as we're concerned, it doesn't really exist. So do you see how this is generally going to work for us? And now you can see here as well, the reason why adding the C in front of it is going to work well for us is because the B8000 fits inside of this physical range here. So because it fits inside of this physical range here, we're able to map with the C as a virtual address, and it can map that over into the physical addressing. So with that, you can see more readily how we can map between virtual and physical addresses. Hopefully this makes it very clear how we can set up paging inside of our operating system. So with this, we now have a really, really basic setup of memory management and paging. We can continue to use it to build on top to build out memory management of different processes, finally get us up to multi-processing, and then we can start to you know, refactor, fix up things in our operating system and start to build more features and functionalities. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.